Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Last Thanksgiving, I was standing on the side of a road with my family watching this spectacle, a Falcon 9 lifting off from Vandenberg, carrying the DART mission into deep space. Yesterday, I was at a you know fine little uh, party in San Francisco with the B612 Foundation, watching live feed from the DART spacecraft as it headed towards its target. Now, this is sped up a lot, but on the bottom left, that is the asteroid Didymus. That is not the target. The real target is its moon, which has officially been named Dimorphos, but the cool people still call it Diddy Moon. It was expected to impact at a speed of about 6.1 kilometers per second, completely destroying the spacecraft, which is an unusual way of declaring mission success. These images came down from the Draco camera system essentially live. We get one frame per second as the vehicle closed in. And these are close-up images of the smallest asteroid we've ever got close to. And that was the final moment. We got a partial image down before the spacecraft stopped transmitting, presumably because it was now you know, shattered into atoms. So yeah, the last full image we got, that is about 100 meters across. So those boulders are several meters across. You know, that's 100 feet by 100 feet, you know, 10 feet size boulders on the surface of this rock. Thanks to the power of video editing, I decided to actually take the last few frames and just smooth them, essentially scale them so that we transition from one frame to the next. And yeah, so this is very obviously a rubble pile asteroid. It is oblate. Uh, which means it's stretched out in one axis. Notice on the bottom left, there is something which sticks out beyond the dark side and is catching the light. Uh, but also notice that the stretching, the oblateness, is in the same axis as its orbit, which you would expect because that's probably induced by a tide. I expect that this is tidally locked to its parent body and that's stretched out in that shape because of the you know, gravity gradient. Another thing to notice is there's no craters on this body. Craters on planetary bodies tend to form by, they need gravity to form. There's not really enough gravity. The debris gets kicked out and it lands back all over the asteroid. And as Dark closes in to make its own impact event, you can see that it's actually pretty much heading for that big boulder right in the middle. Obviously, they couldn't pick that out from a distance. They had to take what they could get. Uh, yeah, this is, well, I mean, it'll really be interesting to see if we can pick that out when a mission goes to it in a few years' time. So this is a slightly cleaner version of the final image released by NASA. You know, they've just basically scaled the image, uh, you know, fixed the curves to actually bring out more detail. This is basically the best image we've got here. And what jumps out to me is there's a lot less fine gravel than we've seen on other rubble pile asteroids. Uh, I guess the best comparison is Ryugu because it's much larger and it's very clear that the surface of Ryugu in this image has a lot of fine material. Whereas I think that when you've got the lower your gravity goes, the more you're going to lose the very light fine material because when you hit a bunch of stuff, the lighter stuff kicks off at a higher velocity and is more likely to be lost. So anyway, hours after the images started to come down from telescopes all over the world, watching the expanding cloud of dust and debris that had been kicked up by this. Remember, this is a science experiment, and if the difference between science and messing around by blowing up asteroids is writing it down. So this image sequence is from the Atlas Project. That's the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. And that's a series of telescopes around the world which are looking for small, fast-moving asteroids near the Earth. This particular telescope was in South Africa. They have telescopes in Hawaii, but Hawaii, it was daytime, so they couldn't make observations. Anyway, what you're seeing is the fix, the asteroid being tracked by the telescope is fixed in the middle. The stars in the background are moving by. Those are nothing to do with it. But the object, it's brighter afterwards than it is before because there's probably a cloud of debris nearby. The cloud that expands off, you'll notice, expands in one direction because the impact happened on the side. And it forms a shell because the event is short. So the stuff gets thrown off at high speed and then the source of the stuff gets cut off. So you form this sort of wave that goes away and then it dissipates. And this is seen by other observers. This is from the South African Astronomical Observatory, I believe. Uh, again, you, in this case, they're letting the asteroid move through the field of view, but you still see the increase in brightness and the formation of this cloud headed in front of the asteroid's apparent motion. 
And again, it's important to remember that the object that we are seeing in these photo of these images of the asteroid is mainly the parent body. The moon is much, much smaller and only contributes a very small amount to the brightness. But both of those are outshone by the brightness of this big cloud. And that huge cloud is key to what the DART mission is about. DART is supposed to demonstrate the ability to divert an asteroid. And that stuff blowing off is almost like a rocket plume. It enhances the momentum transfer from that parent uh, spacecraft. And when modeling these kinetic impactors, you have a factor called beta, which says if you have a beta of two, you multiply the momentum transfer by two. So it gets you better momentum transfer. Now, there's a lot of questions as to what this might be. It's a very complex process and there's a lot of unknowns. This is the best way for us to actually get an idea on what it might be. At the B612 event, the founders, Ed Liu and Rusty Schweikert, declared a public wager as to what they believed the numbers would be betting a dinner. Ed thought the numbers would be higher, uh, Rusty thought they would be lower. I'm really fascinated to find out what they will be. But it will actually take several weeks to actually get enough orbits in because how we're going to measure the effectiveness is by how much the period of the orbit changes. We've got a 12-hour orbit that we need to slowly watch the uh, the orbit come out of phase with its previous motion, and then we'll know just how much the velocity of the asteroid changed. And over the next few days and weeks, we can also expect more results from telescopes. We have this James Webb Space Telescope was watching, and we do have these raw images right now well, I expect that we will get these cleaned up and we will get more detail on that debris cloud. Now, as for the view from the impact site, obviously we couldn't get anything from the parent spacecraft because it crashed into the asteroid and stopped transmitting, but it did carry along a little sidekick called Lichia Cube that was going to do some drive-by shooting off the impact. And the images just got released about 20 minutes ago and I fully expect more science to be done with these images. But on the bottom, on the left, that's the main asteroid. On the top right, that's the moon. And you see very quickly the moon, as it's hit, outshines its parent body. And then the debris cloud starts to expand. And what I'm seeing here is this is not a simple linear expansion, right? So these lines are not straight. There's dynamics inside, uh, you know, that ejector process here. And I think that just basically shows that this is not a simple body, right? This isn't a spherical cow, as we say. Right? When this probe hit the surface and just piled into the object and released all this energy, you're going to get jets of material coming out. And as the material redistributes because of that energy, those jets are going to change direction. And that's my theory as to why we see these structures here. I really want to see more and find out more. Of course, the HERA mission will go and see the aftermath as well. So congratulations to the team behind DART. Uh, thanks for proving that we can, in fact, save the world from killer asteroids. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.